everybody. Welcome to the Glory Road television show. We are doing Facebook today. It's Facebook Live. I am so excited. And I have with me today Joan Hunter. I'm going to plug in Joan Hunter today. It's going to be wonderful to have her with us. I'm going to add her as a guest right now. Added. Joan's out in Houston, and I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Joan. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You're in your studio, I see. Yeah, well, on the actually on the platform of the uh, where we have our conferences, but this is all set up for lights to make me look younger. Well, I tell you, you don't need any lights. You're absolutely beautiful. Oh, well, thanks. It was so awesome meeting you a, a couple of weeks ago, just literally on accident, but it's one of those you know, God, God things. And I'm sorry, my microphone is not staying in my ear or my earpiece to hear you. So, That's so, okay. uh, but anyway, I'm just excited to be here and I'm just expecting great and mighty things to happen. And, uh, and so I'm just excited about the weather in Florida and I love Florida. I'm Floridian by birth. So, but uh, I'm just excited about what God's going to do through this program today. So help set people free in a lot of areas and we're just going to be good to go. Amen. Amen. Well, let me um, give you a proper introduction today so that our viewers, those who may or may know who you are, may not know who you are, we can just give them a proper um, understanding that you are indeed the daughter of Charles and Francis Hunter, the great healing evangelist, and you are a healing evangelist yourself. You're an author, speaker, teacher. Um, you have your own show called Miracles Happen which is at miraclesappen.tv. They can find out more information about that. And um, they can um, see you on Faith USA TV or on Direct TV, uh, Dish, a variety of different ways to be able to reach out to you through television. I know you've been a guest um, on Sid Roth and on Patricia King's um, Extreme Prophetic and just a variety of other people have had you on. So I am truly Marilyn blessed Hickey. that you could so be a part of can't, can't Glory forget Marilyn. Road today. This is wonderful. Yes, I well, I'm excited. I want to know that you uh, wrote this book, Supernatural Provision. I have that book. Off. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. So for those of you who um, have not yet purchased Supernatural Provision, um, Finding Financial Freedom, we want you to have the opportunity to do that. Um, Joan, do you have a place where they could purchase this book um, direct? Yes, you can get it through joanhunter.org or amazon.com. Uh, I want to encourage you, there's, uh, my book is Supernatural Provision. I have just finished recording. Uh, it was released in January, I think, and on January 11th, officially, for Deuteronomy 111. And it's, uh, I'm reading scriptures for about an hour and declaring, decreeing, and praying for your financial breakthrough. So definitely, they go really, really well together. And the book itself actually has a CD in it where I'm actually teaching uh, how to get set free and, and be blessed financially. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people say, well, oh, look at you. You, you had, uh, um, you know, you, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. And I'm like, no, it was wood, it had a lot of splinters. So, you know, I was born into poverty and uh, lived there for a while and supernaturally made it, you know, and, uh, and then, you know, I call it, you know, been poor and I've been po. Po, you can't afford the other O. And uh, that's really, really poor. And somebody the other day, she says, I, she, says, <coughs> excuse me, she says, I can really relate to that because I used to be poor. Couldn't even do, do either. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but anyway, uh, but how God has healed me from the top of my head, soles of my feet in every area of my life and body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. And then as you are aware that every literally everything works together like the hand it's it has the five fingers there's five areas that people need to be healed of and until you get completely healed financially then at that point you don't it's hard to get the rest of your body healed mm -hmm. because you're stressed out about mm -hmm. your finances and different things like that and, and elijah list thinks this is the best book ever on finances Sid Roth, he loves this book, and, uh, you know, he's even recommended it down here, and, and he's a great man, so I've been on it 11 times, but hopefully going to go on a couple more times this year. It's going to be oh, great. Way to go. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, I have seen it come up on Elijah List a few times, and um, actually, that's what a flagged me. A few times, me. isn't that great? And, and I bought your book, and then I got an opportunity to actually be with you a few weeks ago in Houston um, with Patricia King. It was truly Phoenix. amazing. Yeah, got to meet you Phoenix. and your beautiful uh -huh. daughter Charity, and uh, and so I'm glad that we've we've become friends and made this new connection. And so I'm anxious to see how God's gonna take that and advance it. I agree. Well, um, I agree. <laughs> well, one of the things um, I'd like for the viewers to um, learn about today is about having some of that financial freedom. And I know when I read in your book, um, in First John chapter 3, verse 2, we know from the scripture that the word says, may you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And I think you were kind of getting ready to touch on that when you were talking about those five areas. Maybe you can just expound a little bit how important it is personally that our soul is prosperous and then financially that is one of the components that comes as a result of our soul prospering. Right. And it's so important that we get into alignment with his word regarding finances. And what's sad is that churches have taught that prosperity is not of God that all you want is things and things will, you know, and it's, you know, money is the root of all evil. And they misquote that scripture. Whereas the scripture itself says, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. We can have all the things of the world as long as the things of the world don't have us. And uh, because God desires us to live, uh, you know, live comfortably, live nicely, you know, and, and uh, I was talking to somebody the other day and, and they said, I was on my way to church, and this is just literally a couple of days ago, and I looked out, and my whole, all, my, every, all the oil in my car was gone right there on the driveway. And she mm -hmm. goes, God, how am I going to get to church? And this is, God wants us to, you know, to pray for people, not have to pray over our cars to get somewhere, to get to the person. And, uh, and he desires for us to have a nice car. You know, does it have to be a Lamborghini? doesn't have to be, but you know, it's what it's functional and uh, you can have whatever car you have, but as long as we keep our priorities correct and in alignment and uh, not allow those things. I remember uh, about five years ago, I was moving into my house uh, that I currently live in and, uh, and it's, it's a very nice house. It's on a lake and, you know, just supernaturally, God blessed me. It was half price. And uh, so that was really, really nice. It was, it was really nice at full price, but it was really, really nice at half price. And, uh, and so I'm getting ready to, to close, and then it didn't close. And then there was, they needed one more piece of information. Then they needed another piece of information. Then, and I'm like, okay, I have three days off. I have allotted to move into my house. All three days, I was, I was doing paperwork and stuff on the computer. And I was just like, ah, I was ready to scream, <laughs> You ever closed on a house recently? You understand what I'm saying? It's just one mm -hmm. more piece of paper, one more piece of paper, one more bit of information. And I understand they're trying to protect themselves. But the problem is that preachers are known for not paying their bills. You know, to get a loan on a building is, is borderline impossible as a church or especially as a ministry because you don't have like tithers. Okay. And, uh, and so, um, and so I'm, I'm like, I was so frustrated. I'm just like, I'll find a different house. I'll find a different loan people, something, because it was like, it was crazy. In that still small voice of the Holy Spirit, God says, is this house so nice? It will keep you from being on the road. And I said, no. It's a nice place to come home to. It's like a resort. It's a nice place to come home to. I said, but it's not going to keep me from the road. Mm -hmm. Literally, just like that. The bank called and says, we're ready to close. So I closed the following morning at like 10 o'clock. The own, previous owners closed later in the day. I left a power of attorney of a guy to come by, get my keys. We had the movers all ready to come. I had everything mapped out where all the furniture was to go. And I came back home. Everything was in place. Tell, let me tell you, that's how you move. <laughs> Just leave it. Everybody else do it for you. It was great. That's My right. kitchen was all set up and, and you know, and everything. But the, the point of that is, as long as the things that we're, we have, it, as long as it doesn't get in our way of loving him or keeping us from doing 
what God's called us to do. Now, on the other hand, uh, my, you met my daughter, Charity. She has a book called Money Wise. It's a smart plan to manage your money and fuel your dreams. Now, supernatural provision will tell you ways how to get out of debt for supernatural things that you're believing God for. For example, with Charity, several years ago, she has a son who is now 12. Obviously, my grandson, 12 and a half. And she was expecting him, and they made a decision to use cloth diapers because in, if they used disposable diapers, her husband, father of the child, would have to get another job just to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And I said, why don't we ask God? Oh, mom, you know, and I said, okay, fine, whatever. I can still pray. And the natural thing, I can do $25 a week and help them with the diapers. And I, then I found out how much that cost, and that's like two days' worth of diapers, and there's still a whole lot left of the week. I found out how expensive they were. And I said, Father, I just thank you. You're going to take care of our needs. This is a need. And so at that point, uh, I, I was in Nashville, flew home to Houston. Praise God, my four grandchildren from that daughter and her husband, they now live here, which is great. And uh, But so I said, I got a call the next day. They said, does your daughter need any diapers? I'm like, let me pray about it. Yes. And uh, so she says, can I take them to your house tomorrow? I said, fine. So she goes to the house. I didn't tell her. And, uh, and so she goes to the house and she opens the door and she's looking. She can't, she can't see who it is because of so many cases of diapers. It was so incredible. And she says, can you get somebody to help me unload the rest of the diapers? And there was like, at least 10 cases of like four boxes each. And so, so he, for him, never had to buy diapers. More kept coming and more kept coming. His sister, Kate, didn't have to buy any diapers, more diapers, more diapers. Sister, Natalie, no diapers, no diapers. I mean, it was amazing. And then when Presley came, they had kind of run out of diapers. But in addition to that, they, at every shower, they gave a box of diapers and they made a diaper cake. You know, they're so cool. There's several yeah. layers of just diapers. Awesome. So she did that at every shower and still had some that when her sister came, then we sent on the plane, we sent more diapers back with her. So, so Jovi pretty much for Jovi, they didn't even have to buy any diapers. He's going to wow. do abundantly above all we could ever ask, hope, dream, or even imagine even in diapers. But see, people say, why should I ask God for diapers? Ask God. Ask and, God. and the thing is he cares about our needs. And our, part of our needs, in that case, are diapers. Part of our needs, she needed a new car. Story of how she supernaturally got a new car, literally within a month. And I said, why don't we believe God for a car? Oh, mom, shouldn't say that anymore. <laughs> That's what she learned. And so I went back, and she had a car, a picture of her car on uh, the refrigerator, the car that she wanted. The car, and she wrote on there, the car that God's going to give me. And I mm -hmm. thought, they do listen. They listen. So anyway, long story short is she actually, that car became available, the sister car, different name on it, but the sister car of that one, same color scheme, same year, same model, everything that was on her fridge. It was awesome. Wow. You and, know, uh, um, I think it's really important that the viewer does understand that our father is good. He's a good father and he he's loves a good, us good, so good, good father. much and he yes. wants to bless us so much. And, um, and so I think it's really great that you're sharing with the people today about the fact that God does want to meet your need. And no matter where you're at, I just feel like God's speaking to somebody right now who's watching or who's going to watch this, that you're wondering whether or not God is going to meet your need. And Joan and I are going to agree. God is going to meet your need. All you have to do is believe in his goodness. Do not let fear uh, cripple you or restrain you, but believe that he is good. He hears our prayers because of what Jesus has done. We have access. And because we, do. we have access, we need to uh, walk into that place with confidence and assurance in faith that God is going to bless us and give us what it is that we're asking for. And that's so true. And the word, you know, ask, seek, and knock. We know, we know the scriptures. If any of you ask, okay. And it's ask, seek, and knock. A-S-K. And the secret and the main key is asking. 
And if you ask God for a house, if you ask him for a car, that's not, you know, that's not selfish. You need a car. You need a place to sleep. And so oftentimes people say, well, I don't want to ask him. And who am I? I don't deserve it. Oh, come on, get over it. And the thing is, God desires to bless us. And it's like, you know, with, with my children, I have four grown daughters and seven grandchildren. If I were to give any one of those 12 money, no, not one of them would refuse it. My youngest <laughs> grandson is four, my grandchild is four and a half years old. They, even at that age, they know what money is. They, I mean, like the other day I was with him when I was, had seen you and he, he found a nickel. I tell you what, it was just as if he had found a million dollars on the ground. But they, even at that age, they understand there's some kind of value to that money. And what God wants to do, he's looking for people that he can bless, that in turn will bless the kingdom. And, and it's so exciting because yeah. I love the fact of, you know, I usually try to, try to cut down. I'm, a, I'm a, not a millennial, so I actually write checks. But to write a tithe check once a week rather than mm -hmm. almost every day. Because God blesses me every day. I mean, I got here today. Uh, I'm at my office. I got here, and there's a check for $600. Surprise! I mean, it's just really awesome what God's doing. And what God is, he's looking for people that he can bless that will say thank you instead of, no, that's okay. I have enough as you're lying through your teeth. Okay? <laughs> and you're believing God to meet your need. And you're believing for money to come from heaven. The word of God says, give and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together. Now, here's the key. Shall man give into your bosom? Man mm -hmm. will bless you. Man, yes. yes, God is speaking to that person, you know, because God may lay it on your heart to give somebody some money. Like we were out the other day and, uh, and, and somebody felt led to give charity $25 while we were ministering. And I'm like, that is so awesome that I get blessed, but also my children get blessed. And uh, she had been speaking and they got really blessed. So they blessed her with finances. And, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't go, no, no, that's okay. It was just really, really awesome what God did. And, and I want to encourage you that God is looking for people that will just say thank you. Not mm -hmm. based on that you deserve it, that you earned mm -hmm. it. I tried to give somebody uh, something the other day, a husband and a wife a couple of years ago, and uh, I actually wanted to buy, I felt led to buy a, a little Mac computer, you know, the, whatever the, not the PC, but the, the little one, and, uh, and the guy got so upset that we actually had to leave the Apple store mm. because he was screaming so loud and that he didn't want it, and I'm like, I need a new Mac computer. <laughs> I'll, I'll say thank you, you know, that type of thing. I don't, I'm not going to say, no, no, you keep it. You keep your money, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so finally the wife pulled me aside and she says, get the computer. I'll deal with him later, which is sad, but that's what I did. And, uh, and so I said, how about I buy it for me? And then I'll just use it whenever I see you, you know, that thing, just keep it at your house. And, uh, and so anyway, he was so mad that I wanted to give him that computer. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to buy him, no strings attached. You know, it was a way that we could do FaceTime, you know, which back then was, you know, what different form. And I'm like, what's, what's the big deal? And I found out later that his dad told him, never ever take anything, receive anything from anybody that mm. you haven't worked for. I'm like, That's good. wow. Mm. By the way, he's gotten over it, to say the yeah. least. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, I like to Jim, listen. I know that there's a lot of people on the line that um, may be experiencing debt in their life. And um, I would just like for you to talk a little bit about debt. How do we supernaturally get out of debt if we have found ourselves in debt? Well, number one, um, I actually have a teaching in the book on supernatural provision. There are, I feel, three steps in order to break the curse of poverty, okay, and to get out of debt. Yes, uh, excellent, excellent. What We both recommend it, for sure. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, the three steps are, re the one is repentance. 
Repentance, Amen. repent number one for foolish spending. And it's like, got to have it, got to have it, got to have it. And I remember one person, uh, they budgeted $300 for their car payment. They go to get the new car and they go and they go, but you could, you're qualified for this car and your payments would only be $350 where they had set aside 300 And they're going, we can, we're qualified for that. And uh, so anyway, they got the car, the more expensive car. And then they realized that just even that $50 put them in such arrears every month that they were they they actually lost the car because mm. they didn't use wisdom and mm. nothing changed in their finances except the fact that they had overspent even though they were qualified now they're not qualified for anything because mm. they had they lost the car and all that they yeah. had put into it okay so number 1 repent for foolish spending number 2 now this listen to me all the way through this is very very important here Repent for any time you haven't tithed. Now, people mm -hmm. think the word tithe is a five-letter God's word, and it's not. It's in the Bible. People say it was before the law, during the law, after the law. You have to tithe. Then there are some people who say, hey, man, you don't have to tithe anymore because of grace. And look at their life emotionally, financially, and you'll see what happens if you don't tithe. Because I believe that the word says tithe, and it's going to, it releases protection over yes. us and then uh and then the third one is now i forgot to tell you i'll finish that one off that you my opinion you no longer have to tithe because of the law you get to tithe because of love mm -hmm. and when you start mm -hmm. giving and praying for example i talk about scriptural giving in the book so you have you have like okay you get paid a thousand dollars tithe would be a hundred dollars and why not make it 111 based on Deuteronomy 111? And when you do that, that $11 is not going to make or break you. But it goes into the supernatural where God, in turn, will supernaturally bless you back. So that's the getting to, to tithe out of love. Then you start doing that. Like we just are doing our taxes. And we have given over 50%, I mean, I'm sorry, 40% of our gross income, not our net, but of our gross income. We have more now than we've ever had in our entire life. And like, for example, I gave $111. I need a new car. And they said, we don't know what's wrong with the car, but it's $11,100 all under all the others. I said, must be my car. That's the car I have. Mint condition. And, yes. But we saved $11,100. Now, that's from giving and giving and giving that God will give us great deals. Buying a house a $600,000 house, paying $300,000 for it. That's multiplication. That's way more than our tithe and how much we gave last year. And so God yeah. is going to look for blessings like that. Okay, number three is repent for any time you haven't given an offering when God said to give an offering. Now, George mm -hmm. Brown, who is just the name of a convention center here, but just a generic name, comes in and he tells you, God spoke to me this morning as I was getting ready. Everybody in here should give $1,000. You don't give $1,000. That is not disobedience, okay? Because man told you to give $1,000. Now, in, if as God leads on your heart, maybe to give 111 based on Deuteronomy 111, and you don't think, well, that's kind of ridiculous, $111 in scriptural and scriptural giving. And just because you haven't heard of it before doesn't mean it's wrong. And, uh, and so you get, and so you don't give when God spoke to you to give that amount. That's yes. the sin of disobedience. So mm. repeat after me on those three areas. Father, I repent for any foolish spending. And Father, I repent any time I haven't given you your bit back, your portion. And Father, I repent of any time I haven't given an offering when you said to give an offering. All of that is sin. Take it from me now and put it on the cross, never to be held against me again. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I can't fix my financial problem. I can't get out of debt. I've tried. Father, I lay that on your altar. Give me wisdom on how to get out of debt, wisdom on how to plan for the future, mm -hmm. and wisdom on how 
to spend my money in Jesus' name. I, amen. I also want to tell you, it is not a sin to have a savings account. No. That's a heavy duty no, statement. <laughs> because, but it's the That's American true. way to spend. It's the American way to be in debt. It's not God's way. God's way is we are to be lenders, not borrowers. Mm, and so good. praise God. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, thank you so much for that. And I just Lots of want good stuff. to, um, it is good stuff. I want to concur with um, the things that you've said. Uh, I know my husband and I, we're very big tithers, very big givers. And God has slashed so many things in my life to make a way, an mm -hmm. open door for him to bless me even more as a result of tithing and as a result of sowing seed. I know that I sit in the seed I do today because of the giving that I have done. Absolutely. And I, I'm sure you can concur with me as well, that you would not have your television program there, there. You would not be traveling all over the world as a healing evangelist if you did not believe God and respond in faith. Finances um, are a faith walk with God. And um, when you read in your book, you read all, um, Joan shares all of these different um, things that she experienced where God met her need when she had nothing. And so we have to remember, if you're listening right now and you feel like you have nothing and you're like, oh, I feel like I have nothing to give. No, you have something to give because God gives the seed. And you just need to look around, look around your house, look around where you're standing, where you're sitting. There is a seed there that can be deposited somewhere. And if you believe in faith and stop looking at what you don't have, but looking at what you have and then taking what you have and blessing with that, you'll start to see the heavens open and the miracles begin to happen. But I think when we get that mentality, I have nothing, I have nothing, then we hold back in fear and we don't give anything instead of saying the way that we break right. this to believe we have something and I'm going to find out by wisdom, God revealing to me what this something is since he gave me the seed. And then I go and deposit that faith and faithful obedience to where he tells me to deposit that. And it's so neat that uh, it reminded me of a story when we have a uh, healing school and ordination certification here in Tomball, Texas. And uh, this lady came like from Arizona, New Mexico, so I'm a long way away. And so she drives, and then she goes and stops and gets gas. Well, she realizes she left her debit card at home, and she brought so much cash with her. She's like, oh, God, what am I going to do? She says, I'm going. So she used her cash, got, got here. I mean, literally, supernaturally. How am I going to pay for my hotel? She goes to the hotel. She calls her pastor. Her pastor lends her the money on his credit card, pays for it, et cetera. What, that in itself is a miracle. And so she, in turn, comes to the service, offering receipts. She goes, I have nothing. I don't have my debit card. I have no cash left. You know, I have nothing. What do I do? She looks in her purse. She had five mints. Mints, like mints, okay? Candy. <laughs> so she gives those. And I remember the accountant goes, we got five mints in the offering <laughs> tonight. I said, <laughs> praise God, bless it. That may have been all that they had. And before she left the building, nobody knew this. Before she left the building, God laid it on my heart to give you $100. Gave her $100. She was able to get more, more gas. So she was excited. She was able to eat. Now, she had already paid for her meals here on site during lunch. But she still needed dinner. She was like, thank you, Jesus. So she goes and she gets dinner. And then... This happens, and then that happens. She ends up with nobody knowing what's going on in her pocket, giving in every offering, okay, because she had the money, the $100. She had money designated to give in every offering. She had over $500 in cash going home. She checks out of the hotel, and the, the manager says, you've been really, really, really nice, and we just really appreciate you. And we're just not going to even charge the credit card. Is that okay? Let me pray about it. Yes. So that was an additional $500. And you think, well, she just gave mints. She gave, she gave everything she had. And yes, she gave the mints. But God sees the heart. He didn't bless her with, you know, a thousand more mints. God blessed her with more than enough money to buy a thousand mints, actually. 
And, uh, but see, God's going to, he, he loves to bless us. He loves to bless us. And, uh, which is really neat. Amen. And he's now, looking for um, people that are radical let's givers. Let's talk a little bit. You know, Go ahead. let's just talk a little bit about, um, Isaiah chapter 55. I've been teaching a lot on how important it is for us to plant our seed now and that this is a season to plant our seed. Um, as you know, the calendar is going to turn over in mid-March um, to the month of Nisan, and it's there. Um, that's two weeks before Passover, but that is God's calendar for the spring. That's the Hebrew calendar for the spring to start. And so um, God really gave me a word a few weeks ago and was speaking intently to me to tell the people to plant their seed now and that I have given them seed. And so he took me to Isaiah 55, 10, and 11. I'm just going to read that. Um, and see if you want to elaborate any on this from a prophetic standpoint. But in Isaiah 55, the word says, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and, and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word, God's word, be which goes forth from his mouth and it will not return to him empty, but will accomplish that which he desires. And so... When it comes to planting the seed, we will receive a return because God is looking for a return on the seed that he gives us. He's not one that's going to give a seed and is not going to bring back a return because the word says that it doesn't return to him void or empty, but it does accomplish the, whatever the seed was sent does accomplish the purpose for which God sent it. But we also have to speak truth to the seed that we sow. Right? I mean, you brought up Deuteronomy chapter 1, right. verse 11. That, by sowing $111, you're sowing the seed of the word of God, believing Deuteronomy 1, 11. And as you deposit that um, in a good soil, you're agreeing with God, agreeing with the word. And so it's important that when we plant our seed, we also plant the word of God with our seed so that we can see a harvest and, and God will, will receive back what it is that he put in our hands. Is that correct? Absolutely, which is like so incredibly awesome. Um, and the thing is, sometimes people curse their offering. Like that giving never works. They've cursed their offering. They've cursed their finances. I'll never get out of debt, okay? Cursing, the, and, it, and it, it's like God wants to get them out of debt, but they're pushing it away by their words. I'll never get out of debt. God doesn't multiply yes, money. They're pushing, pushing the blessing away, okay? And so it's very yes. important that what comes out of our mouth that I say as a people, you know, because around here, you know, it's miracles happen, miracles happen, this and that, and our offering buckets say miracles happen. And I say, put it in there and say, go and grow. Go and grow. Speak over that seed to go and grow and not curse it, okay? Last weekend, I was in West Texas, and the, the people who do the worship there, are they have cotton fields. And they had just plowed the cotton down and everything like that. Actually, brought some of the bowls home for my grandkids who'd never seen it before. And uh, so that's kind of fun. And uh, so he goes out there. Now, now think about the, the reality of this. He goes out there to his land. And he says, in the name of Jesus, I command this soil to grow cotton without planting any seed. But see, every year he hmm. plants the seed for that. He plants the seed for the cotton hmm. or the beans, whichever you know, he, he switches. He does not say to the soil, grow. He doesn't speak over his, you know, the crop to be harvested when he hasn't sown a seed. And a lot of times people are looking for God to bless them without even doing their part of sowing their seed. And you can, he can pray over that mm. dirt, fabulous dirt, by the way, the most incredible dirt. He can pray until he's blue in the face over that dirt, but until he plants the seed, it's not going to come back. It's not going to, I have a new book coming out uh, mm. beginning of April. That's good. That's good. And it's a daily declarations That's... over financial blessings. It's a nice, it's kind of a neat thing. They, they said it's going to be a green, I, like a rich green. I said, you mean like a green? They go, 
actually, yes. So it's going to be Rich Hunter Green, and it's going to be on finances. So and it's going to be leather. It's going to be really, really pretty. So it's due in, uh, due in sometime next month. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be amazing. I'll mail That's you one. Miss Candace, not everybody watching. Well, oh, I'd like one. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I want to ask the viewers, those that are watching, if you have any questions for Joan, we'll take a couple of questions. So if you just want to put them up on the, um, you know, type them in. And then if I catch them and I'm looking closely here, we will ask um, Joan any of the questions that you have. Um, I just want to give you all that opportunity. So if there's something you want to ask her, throw that up. While we're waiting for a question, um, Joan, um, is there anything that God has on your heart uh, that you would like to share with the people that we might not have already covered? Something that um, when you knew we were going to do this well, interview, this, you were this kind of year, burning prophetically. Uh, according to Jewish calendar, share something. The Jewish calendar is... Okay. This year is the, on the Jewish calendar, 5778. You're the open gate, open windows, open windows of heaven. And I believe that God's going to open up incredible, incredible doors for ministry, for finances, for relationships, for all kinds of things. I mean, the invitations I'm getting, especially for overseas right now, I'm like, okay, God, if you want me to go like to buy, to Dubai and, you know, I'm scheduled in Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, big crusade in the Philippines and uh, in Singapore, all that takes money. And it's like, Father, I thank you for blessing me so I can help contribute to this, but also blessing uh, my partners so that they can help send me every place I'm going. I'm going to Israel in a, in a few weeks, and, you know, those who bless Israel is blessed. And I know that, that it's going to be a very special time of seeding into Israel with miracle services included that we're going to be blessed supernaturally to do what God's called us to do the rest of this year. And, uh, but this is a year that God says is a year of surprises. I asked God for a word. He gave me a word. Next year, I'm going to ask him for a paragraph because this year he gave me the word surprise, that there's going to be surprises. Like I walk in and there's a check, very unexpected, for about $600. I'm like, that is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. I get a little notification that says, we're going to put money in your bank account tomorrow. Hallelujah. And then I said, oh, um, I owe you money from 15 years ago. Is that okay if I pay? Uh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and I got a letter saying, or a text message, you, you have money, lost money that you can claim. So we, we did that. We filed it uh, for the ministry, haven't gotten the check yet, but it was for $1,222 that some people, there was like four things where money was owed to us. But see, God is like hidden treasure. We talk about giving, uh, scriptural giving, and it's Isaiah 45, 3, that he's going to reveal hidden treasures to us money that's owed mm. to us. I thought it was like trauma, stress, cellular memory, the things that I teach on the area of physical healing. And, but this is actually for, uh, you know, for finances too. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, a hundred dollar bill that I, that was lost, but now it's found. I like doing it that way. That's awesome. And, uh, but what God wants to do is he wants to bless you with surprises. And uh, like I'll, I'll say, I just see a surprise coming to you. And all of a sudden, they, you get, like for you, you get another speaking engagement. And it was in, in totally not what you were in, anticipating. Because the last place I ever expected to get was a good invitation from Pakistan. I get lots of invitations every day. But I got a good one from Pakistan. I'm like, this is awesome. I might be going to Pakistan. Amen. <laughs> you know? And, and well, we have God's, a question that came what in, What God Jim. wants to do is get ready. Okay. I'm ready. Awesome. awesome. I'm on pause here. We so have a question you. that came in that okay. I wanted to ask you. Okay. This is from Tony Maskell. He said, have you found there are seasons of planting where it appears the harvest seems like it's way off? Then it kicks in after a time. Yes. I believe that time is over. There are times when that we have seeded in the past. This right now is the season to harvest the crop. 
because now finances are needed in the kingdom of God more than ever. So I believe that those that, that we've seeded years ago, it's like we didn't really see any real harvest. But also there's harvest that we're not aware of. I asked people last, last week, I said, how many of you have seen a miracle in your finances in the last day of being here and have given in the offering? And out of, say, 100 people, 10, 15 people raised their hand. So I said, how many of you were taken out to lunch today? Oh, me. Did you have to pay? No. They don't even think about that. They, somebody bought them a T-shirt, gave them a free T-shirt, said miracles happen. Somebody gave them a book. Somebody gave them a CD. They don't even think about that. So God is actually blessing where we're not even acknowledging it. Mm. That's good. That's good. Looks like we have another question. I can't read the total of it, but let me see if I can't give it to you here. This is uh, Maria De Sebastiano. De Sebastiano. She says, do you think it's possible to miss a financial blessing after sowing a seed? Because we go to the wrong place or the wrong person. And then she's giving somewhat of a testimony. I can't really read the rest of it, but in answering that, okay. do you think it's possible that we miss a financial blessing after sowing the seed because we go to the wrong place or person? Yes, because see, you can buy the best seed and plant it in a horrible soil and it won't mm. grow. Mm. So pray, where should I send my seed? Because in the ministries that we have going, uh, are, it's good ground. You know, I mean, we even have a bank account that checks are made out to miracles happen. You can't, you can't beat that. That's like awesome. But what God does is when you give into a church ministry, etc., that is doing a lot for God, that's when the seed is going to be multiplied. You give it into a dead church, a dead ministry that's not doing anything. How can you expect really for that to be harvested? And, uh, mm -hmm. and the thing is so important is that you really pray and, and ask God, where should I send my seed? Now, I partner with like people like Sid Roth, Marilyn Hickey, Patricia King every month for actually years and years and years. But it's like, it's kind of, it's really ironic right now because it's like I see it into Marilyn Hickey when she goes to Pakistan. So my money helps send her. And now I'm probably going. <laughs> Didn't expect my seed to be multiplied that way, <laughs> but in every area. And it's been really, really awesome about all the doors that God has opened up for me. But it's very, very important that we uh, give where God says to give. He's not going to tell us to give into any dead work. And, uh, and just be real sensitive to, you know, I'm sorry, the ear thing is not doing very good today, but. Uh, but we need to do what we can do to hear God. And God is speaking a lot clearer than we think he is. And because he will tell you where to give and how much to give. Amen. Okay. All right. This is good. Well, let's, um, we've taken a couple of uh, questions, Joan. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with us here before we close down? I just want to make sure that um, if there's anything you feel the viewers need to know today about financial breakthrough, I want to make sure that the people, um, they come away from this connection that we've made here talking about financial blessing and they feel like their faith is increased. Um, I'm just sensing that there were people that, you know, came on today, they, they're, they're, they want to believe, but they're not really grabbing a hold of that, you know, wondering if just talking about, um, you know, sowing seeds or, or even partnership. I know you share about partnership in your book about how to partner um, in agreement and that partners come in agreement with those people. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on that then before we close partnership and agreeing uh, as partners agree with a particular ministry? Cause when you're sowing your seed, you're becoming a partner with that ministry. What, what do you draw off of the ministry when you partner with the ministry? Well, when you partner with the ministry, what they're doing, you, you basically become one with that and the blessings that happen on my head, 
will go down. It goes down to my employees. It goes down to the partners. My family, my children are incredibly, incredibly blessed. Absolutely phenomenally blessed because they're my children. Okay, when you partner with the ministry, what is going on in the ministry, what you like about the ministry, it will come down to you. I've been seeding into Sid Roth television program. Now I have my own television program. And so Mm -hmm. what what do you want? Do you want to glean supernatural anointing in the area of healing? Then you seed into a ministry that believes in healing, not into a ministry that thinks healing went out. You know, and uh, went out with the disciples. I'm so glad I'd be dead if that were true, but <laughs> to say the least. But I want to encourage you to to be to really pray about where you want to be partner with, because it is a a commitment one to the other, and and back. It's not just I'm going to give, but what is going on in the ministry is also it blesses you back too, and and you become more of involved where that's concerned. And then, and, and what I'm sensing here, just to kind of reiterate, number one, repent. Repent for foolish spending. Anytime you haven't given your portion, to, his portion to God. And then anytime you didn't give an offering when God said to give an offering. Also, repent. Father, I have said words that I believe have cursed my finances. So, Father, in the name mm. of Jesus, I, I renounce those words. I repent for saying them. I cut off any power that they had over me. That Father, right now, my finances from this day forth are blessed. Amen. Mm. Oh, amen. Amen. Well, I hope those of you who've been on the line with us have prayed those few prayers that, that Joan walked us through. Repentance is a key to breaking the chains of the enemy over our financial situation. Simply repenting and then Absolutely. being faithful to be obedient and follow through again will put us on the right path. You're never too far away from having the opportunity to come back and move forward, be redeemed, get back on the right track again, and move into what God has for you. I think so many people fall into that place of regret and they think, you know, God is done with me. He's finished. My finances are messed up. I'm never going to reach purpose and destiny. The devil is a liar. You are going to reach purpose and destiny. You've just got to get yourself back on the right path. And that's all repentance is, is getting right back on the get right path. Get your mouth in line. Your mind and your mouth in order. You got to get your mouth and in your order, mouth. too. And, um, and then begin to take Holy Ghost soap faith coming through the screen out. right there. <laughs> <laughs> faith. You have to apply faith to all of this, too. I mean, the the currency of the kingdom of heaven is faith. God operates in the realm of faith. He's expecting us to believe in who he is and what he's done already for us. And then he empowers us to walk in that. And so I just want to thank you so much, Joan, because through the prayers of repentance that you prayed today, those who were on the line with us or watched the video will have the opportunity to walk back through this again and to repent. We want to make sure that slates are clean here, especially because the Hebrew calendar is turning over the middle of March and we're going to start our new year. We're going to move forward and we want to make sure that um, everyone has things together. They're planting right seeds in right soil with right heart attitudes and a clean slate, knowing that if they got off the track, they can get right back on it through repentance and through speaking truth again. So um, if you haven't gotten Joan's book, Supernatural Provision, you need to do this. Um, Simply go to amazon.com or go to joanhunter.org. You'll have the opportunity there. She has a whole lot of other books on healing and all kinds of things. Um, So you want to make sure you tap into Joan's ministry and really draw off the anointing that she has. Um, on her life. Um, Joan, is there any final comments you want to make before we close down here completely? I just want to say that God wants you blessed. He wants you blessed. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to leave on that note. God wants you blessed. 
share this Facebook Live video for anybody and everybody that you know that needs to understand supernatural provision. We'll have Joan on again, and we'll talk about another subject matter. She's got a wealth of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in a variety of areas, especially since she's a healing evangelist. But use this opportunity to heal your finances. Joan has an anointing on her life for healing. Let your finances be healed and step in to break through. You can reach me at CandaceSmithman.com. Um, you can like my public page at Candace Smithman if you're on my Candace Borland Smithman page. Um, subscribe to my YouTube um, as well. I have a lot of amazing people on the show just like Joan and we want to be able to share as much um, information as we can about who God is, who Jesus is, and how you can move on the way to his throne, really connect with him, and get into that place of releasing heaven in your life. Remember, there is a throne, and you're on it all the way. The glory road means you're on the way to his throne, walking in the glory of God and responding to the glory of God. So we just thank you for being with us today, and please reach out to myself and to Joan, because we want to continue to minister to you and to encourage you. So we want to thank you so much for being with Amen. us today. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Share thank the you. video. God, God bless. Bye-bye.